I want to talk about the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. Keep in mind that at the time I filmed this, I don't know what the verdict will be. Um, so I'm talking about this with incomplete information in the event you're watching this in the future. But having said that, though, I don't expect him to be found guilty. And I never expected him to be convicted even before the trial started because we have a very biased system and our so-called criminal justice system both protects and upholds white supremacy. And this is just going to be another chapter in that long book. And really what I think is going to happen is the jury ultimately is going to see themselves in Kyle Rinhouse and they're going to vote to acquit. I think they saw the crocodile tears and they bought it. They fell for it hook, line, and sinker because they think, well, you know, this is just a misguided young man who did something that he's going to have to live with for the rest of his life. No need to unnecessarily punish him. And of course, you know, I can't get into the minds of the jurors, but they view him as this naive 17-year-old who made a mistake. And sure, we're all foolish and naive and do stupid things at that age, but most people don't kill other people at that age. And, you know, this idea that he never intended to hurt anybody is a little bit bizarre to me, considering the fact that he crossed state lines to do, quote, security at a Black Lives Matter rally. And we know what that means. Security from far-right militias and right-wingers usually is code for intimidate Black Lives Matter protesters. And when they talk about doing security, they're not meaning security for the protesters, protecting them from police brutality or anyone else who's going to harm them. They mean protecting property because property to them is more valuable than human life. And, you know, it doesn't even matter that Kyle Rittenhouse, before he killed two people, was at a CVS talking about how he wants to use his AR to shoot people. That doesn't even matter. It wasn't admitted into court because it would be viewed as tainting the jury. I mean, you'd think that that piece of information would be relevant considering he's on trial for killing people with that same gun. But it's just, it goes to show you how terrible our system is. And there's no amount of reform that can fix the system. It has to be torn apart and rebuilt from top to bottom. If somebody can show up to a Black Lives Matter rally and shoot two people and get away with it and claim self-defense, that's a bad system. If the prosecution can't even refer to his victims as victims and you have a judge that's 100% on his side, that's a bad system. And even if by some miracle he's actually held accountable for the lives that he took that will never come back, well, he still wins either way, as was explained by Isaac Bailey, eloquently so in an op-ed for NBC News, because if he's convicted, he'll be a martyr. And if he is uh, able to walk free, then, I mean, that's a victory in and of itself, obviously. So this really highlights the flaws that we already knew existed within our system. And when you consider the fact that a black teen would never be able to get away with this, nobody would buy this self-defense line if it were a black teen, it goes to show you how terribly flawed and racist our criminal justice system is but isaac bailey breaks it down in this op-ed that i want to share to you because he explains why you know this is likely going to end in uh, kyle rittenhouse being acquitted he writes if rittenhouse is convicted he will likely stop being a right-wing mascot and become a right-wing martyr if he isn't convicted he will set a precedent for others like him to pick up guns they shouldn't have and thrust themselves into the middle of unrest they should avoid confident in knowing that president won't be in their future to his supporters and even many of his detractors actors Rittenhouse isn't a monster. Not really. He was a young, dumb kid hyped up on the Foxification or Fox News effect of American discourse on the Black Lives Matter movement in a country that fetishizes guns for show, for sport, and for killing. Not a white supremacist like, say, Dylan Roof. Not really. He wore no hoods and didn't wrap himself in the Confederate flag. He's a patriot who tried to bring calm to chaos because, as Fox News primetime host Tucker Carlson told us at the time of the shooting, the adults around him wouldn't maintain 
maintain order. He was so nonviolent that police officers greeted him and those like him like fellow guardians of the community before he killed anyone. He didn't open fire until absolutely necessary. It was self-defense. His supporters have told us outside the courtroom and his lawyers have argued inside the courtroom. Had quote criminals who many of us prefer to call Rittenhouse's victims, though the judge said they can't be called that during the trial, not rushed him, had not provoked him, they would be alive and he would never have been charged. None of his decisions before the moments he pulled the trigger seemed to matter. He defended himself. That's all. Predominantly, white voters were trying to defend their freedom, so they flocked to an open bigot like Donald Trump and stormed the U.S. Capitol. Angry parents, most of them white, are storming school board meetings demanding an end to critical race theory lessons to protect white children from feeling guilt about America's violent racist history and how it has created the foundation of inequity we still see today. Politicians and local officials, again, many of them white, have stoked this by framing the teaching of race and books that explore its context as something constituents should defend their communities from. The truth is that too many white Americans probably see themselves in Rittenhouse, afraid of anyone, whether white or of color, who wants to live in a more equitable country, even if some don't want to say so out loud. So I think that he's making really important points here. Either way, Kyle Rittenhouse is going to emerge victorious. If he's found guilty, he'll be a martyr. And when he's released, he'll be able to have a book deal and he'll be a superstar. But I mean, if he is freed and he walks, then he has his freedom and he gets to live his life unlike his victims who are gone forever. And on top of that, now this is going to legitimize vigilante justice, justice in quotes, in the United States. And the people who are defending Kyle Rittenhouse notice how they can only defend him narrowly. They have to strip the entire event of its context. You can't mention that he threw up a white power sign. You can't mention that he crossed state lines looking for trouble. You can't mention that a week prior he was on video saying that he wants to shoot people with that gun. You have to strip away the context in order to do this mental jujitsu to make it seem as if, well, he's really the one who's the victim, then he was just defending himself, uh, you know, against these scary Black Lives Matter protesters. And either way, this should be a wake-up call for people, but it's not, because all of these things uh, that are being talked about to defend Kyle Rittenhouse understand that if he were black, he would never have this luxury. Mike Brown was demonized after he was killed by a police officer. And as this Twitter account points out, Tamir Rice was 12 and was killed for having a fake toy gun. Kyle Rittenhouse, 17, killed two people, walked by police after killing two people, got to go home and sleep. Exactly. Philando Castile was exercising his Second Amendment right to carry legally, and he was shot and killed. So, do you understand that all of the things that we're talking about to defend Kyle Rittenhouse, he gets this luxury of being defended, of using self-defense as an excuse for taking two lives, specifically because he's white. Imagine if somebody who was black, a black teen, 17 years old, went to a vaccine mandate protest disproportionately with white people and carried a gun and it ended up killing two people. Would our legal system even buy for a second self-defense? No, they'd say this black person was very clearly looking for trouble. They point to, you know, any posts on social media that indicate a history of violence. If he's smoking pot, that person would never have this many people defend them as our defending Kyle Rittenhouse. And as good politic guy put it, what is the logical extent of saying what Kyle Rittenhouse did was self-defense? I mean, so you can just bring a military grade weapon to a place you know will be chaotic then just start murking people when you feel somewhat unsafe. And that's exactly it. That's what you can do if you're white. Because the thing is that white tears resonate with juries and with America. Whereas black tears, black pain and suffering, you know, maybe people care about it for a short period of time, as was the case with the George Floyd murder. Uh, but it's really easy to to get them to forget and turn against that. I mean, we saw finally people pay attention to police brutality in America with the Black Lives Matter protests. And now all of a sudden, you know, Black Lives Matter and this slogan to fund the police is toxic and nobody can understand why anyone would want to defund the police. It just, you know, we have a shit system and part of the problem is that Americans, they don't see the bias that's right in front of them. And when they do see it, they get propagandized. They get manipulated by right-wing media to forget about it or view it in a different way. So, you know, this is not This is a case that is unsurprisingly um, 
showing the flaws in our so-called criminal justice system, where you have somebody who killed two people getting the claim self-defense because America is a fucked up racist country.